what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of, like P90X founder Tony Horton, you may have heard of, but what you may not know is, you know, Wayne, he made money as a street mime before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars. That's how he made money. Uh, he put a hat on the street wow. and do street miming, and that's how he made his food and uh, rent money. Um, Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark talks about growing her company to $20 million with five employees and selling to Disney, but she also talks about beating cancer twice. And Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. So check out many more episodes on inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And what we do is we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners um, by helping them run and launch their podcast that generates ROI. And for me, you know, podcasting is a lot more personal. It's not just business because my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor, him and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany. And they were the only members of their family to survive. But his words and legacy live on because of an interview, because the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him. And I put it on my about page and I watch it multiple times a year um, just for inspiration and appreciation and gratitude. So yes, podcasting will help your business, but it helps you and your guests leave a legacy of knowledge. Um, and I personally credit podcasting to one of the best things I've done for my business and my life. Um, besides meeting my wife because of an amazing relationship. So we worked with Berkshire Hathaway companies, um, agencies, SaaS companies, any B2B businesses. So if you have questions, um, you can email support at rise25media.com or go to rise25.com. Um, Wayne, I am excited to introduce today's guest. We have Wayne Deering. He's co-founder of USP Fulfillment. And for 30 years, they've done full service print production, fulfillment, and our direct mail house. And they create and ship everything from books, promotional items. They serve up products for infomercials, speakers, events, and subscription fulfillment. And you've probably heard of some of the companies they've done work for. Uh, they work with companies like Costco, Sony, Coca-Cola, Disney, Walmart. Um, and they've even created and sent items for the Grammys and the Emmy Award shows. Wayne, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I want to start off in... And how did you get in this business? You know, it's an interesting story. Um, years ago, a good 30 years ago, I was designing, just kind of goofing around on a computer. I didn't really have any background in design, didn't have uh, any formal training. And I started designing on a uh, a logo. It was a logo I was designing for somebody that had asked me and they actually paid me for it. I had never been paid to do any design. I thought, hmm, this is sort of interesting. Um, started to go ahead and uh, kind of market myself a little bit back then and started making art for people. One thing led into another from doing the design, the, the natural uh, progression from that was people I was doing design for needed print. Hmm. And I started actually by just going to uh, wholesale uh, print vendors and buying the printing and being the guy in the middle and then mm -hmm. reselling it to them. And then it was just a natural progression into the, the printing business. And from there, that led into the fulfillment side. And it just it's kind of run its course from there. What were they asking you to print? At the time. I, in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning, it was just real basic stuff, flyers, postcards, mm -hmm. uh, nightclub flyers, of all things. I probably designed 10 or 12,000 nightclub flyers wow. over the years, so, uh, and was just doing that for quite some time. You know, it was, a, it, it was a, a good way, an easy way to sit at home and make money. So, 
you started doing design and then they would request you to do do printing um what was the progression it seems mm -hmm. like maybe you know like flyers what else were did did you start getting into over the years because i know you do well, a lot from there it's it just yeah Go ahead. Yeah, I know you do a lot of things. So I just if you could talk about some of the progression and some of the things you actually do, um, probably because people requested you to do it, I imagine. Yeah, that's really what it came down to is I uh, even today in this company, we, we have a kind of a mantra, we, we don't say no to anything. If somebody needs it done, we will get it done one way or another. Mm -hmm. Even if we've never done it, before, which at this point, we probably just about done it all. But um, what it was, you know, it's it, from the natural progression in terms of, uh, of the, the print, it yeah. started with, like I said, the flyers, it started to get into other stuff, more customized pieces, booklets after that, then it just really got into really anything they were asking for, if it was a custom folded, a custom finishes, all this sort of stuff. And, you know, that just kept on going. Um, and as we did more, as I got more under my belt, more people were requesting, you know, uh, stuff through the years, you just sort of hook up with different people when you design. And I started doing a lot of Halloween stuff. I started, uh, illustrating, um, uh, items that were going to be made uh, for Halloween props. So we draw them and then I would take them out to Hollywood and the different um, uh, special effects houses that hmm. did uh, King, uh, Lord of the Rings, Hellboy, those special effects houses would actually make the artist masters. And then we'd send them out to, to China and Sri Lanka and different places to have them made into production pieces for sale wow. for Halloween. So what, so they were actual like masks and actual products that people would wear? Uh, full props, not, not the products they wear. Okay. Imagine like a, a Halloween thing with a, a guy with brains coming out of his head or something. I'd illustrate that and then right. take it out and the artists at these uh, particular places would make it. It was a fun time. Uh, Halloween stuff is always, you know, it's, it, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it'd be interesting to hear the evolution of the offices you had because I'm, I'm curious the turning point because it, it, it seems like there's some kind of turning point where you are using other facilities and then you have to make a, a real decision to invest in equipment and space and staff and everything, which I imagine is a big decision. Yeah, it is. You know, it just gets to a point um, where Printing becomes very competitive because it's highly commoditized. So it, it got to a point where being the middleman in printing wasn't working. And that sort of coincided with the internet um, becoming more ubiquitous and people using it. So the, the commoditization of, of printing and that made it where in order to still make money in printing, we got into the printing business. Yeah. So tell me and the with that, bought the, the machines. Yeah, the, at what point, okay, you start off in whatever, your bedroom, and then what, what were the offices, the evolution of the offices after that? Well, it started off, yeah, at, at a home office, and then from there, it, it went to a um, – more like an executive office just so I could get out of the house from there. Then we started investing in different equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually got a retail location and the retail location was more of a, um, just production. Uh, that, that front end retail location. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, it was, it was actually like a retail print shop. Okay. And, you know, started buying the equipment we needed and investing in, in different uh, things in order to be able to uh, serve the people that were coming to us. So. And then was, is that what you solve today or have you? Well, we continue to grow. So yeah, yeah, yeah we continue to grow. Um, we have uh, several locations, several businesses that, that we own that are all part of USP, offices in Newport Beach here, another office in Santa Ana that where we make custom boxes, custom binders. Um, 
yeah, we had to move out of a, the, the retail fronted space. We moved into a warehouse because at a point during the, the print, people started asking us to fulfill what we mm. were printing. Right. And it really started more with the, the info guys. So we were making tens of thousands of courses for these guys. Uh, and then we were shipping them to their fulfillment company and they asked us to start doing that was about 15 years ago. And, mm -hmm. uh, so we got into a warehouse, moved the whole operation, and now we not only make the you know the regular printing, the courses for everybody, things for the, you know all the different companies that you mentioned, but in most cases we fulfill that stuff as well. Hmm. Yeah, walk me through a use case. So let's say, whatever. Back in the day, Zig Ziglar's on stage. He sells a million, you know, of his courses, um, and then they will. Um, let's say you're producing those particular courses for that speaker or author, whoever. Um, and then you will actually send that out on their behalf. Yeah. So what happens is we make them, we warehouse them. They sit here, uh, they're made and completely assembled, put into boxes. The orders come into our system from their CRM, from their shopping cart, whatever, or in the case of say an event where he's on stage, they send us a spreadsheet, goes into our system. The orders are processed, labels are made, boxes are closed up, label goes on it, it goes out. We handle all the returns too. We check the returns for resellability and it goes, if they're resellable, perfect condition, never used. They go back on the shelf, go back into stock. Otherwise they're processed or given back to our client. Mm -hmm. What, tell me about the decision to do that because I could see someone coming to you and go, Hey, um, I've been saying the fulfillment house, but I just want to use you. And I could see you just as easily be like, well, um, no, this is our, our partner facility fulfillment. We just want to focus on the printing. What made you decide to, because it seems like a lot of moving parts with the fulfillment side. It is. My partner, Reza, and I, you know, we really call ourselves, uh, if you can imagine back in the days of when circuses were real popular and you had the guy there with all the sticks yes, uh, with the plates on top and he's spinning the plate. Yes. We feel like we're that guy. We have a lot of plates up there and we constantly keep them moving. So to answer your question, yeah, it's, it's part of that. We don't say no to our clients sort of mantra. Um, they ask us to do it. We figured it out. Yeah. And uh, we just moved into it. It is a lot of moving parts. It is a lot of responsibility. Uh, time to market is paramount, right? And if somebody buys something, especially in today's day and age, with the likes of Amazon and some of these companies where you order something right now at 1030 yeah. in the morning and you get it at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. Later, right. right, right. So it's it's that sort of uh, change in the landscape that, uh, you know, prompted us to really get good at the fulfillment side of it, quickly process and get stuff out because it, it's important to the customers and it's, and, and the people expect it now. It's no longer uh, it, something where it was a novelty getting something very quickly, you know, and it was nice. Now it's yeah. just an expectation. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest challenge? In most cases, orders go out the same or go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I say most, in most cases, the, the orders come in and go out the same day. Mm. I was just saying, what's um, sure. <clears throat> the biggest challenges around the fulfillment side? It, you know, it's just, it's, it's very laborsome. It's not an easy process. It may look easy. We're kind of like ducks on a lake, you know, we make it look simple, but in order to make it all work and to flow, it's, it, it is a lot of work. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, it's not as easy as doing straight fulfillment. Uh, the, the print fulfillment is not as easy as doing regular pick pack fulfillment when I say straight fulfillment, which we do as well. So we do e-com fulfillment for uh, a number of companies out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that's real simple. You take a, a product that's already done, you know, it's a single SKU goes in a, uh, a box or a bubble mailer or a poly mailer, and then it goes out. Mm -hmm. uh, the print fulfillment, it, it is a lot more uh, complicated because one course may have 110 different SKUs in it. So, uh, you know, coordinating the whole part between, uh, um, 
all the print production and then assembly and getting it out the door and making sure that the QC on it is 100% that nothing's missed. You know, that that's it is an interesting sort of uh, uh, process the whole way through. So, what, What's in some examples of e-com products that you fulfill? Uh, so we do, uh, there's a product out there that's very popular right now. Uh, one of our clients, Boom Boom, it is a... Um, essential oil inhaler, mm -hmm. uh, nasal mm -hmm. inhaler. And it's uh, that one and they have a CBD line too, but um, they've done really well. They were on Shark Tank. Uh, they've, a number of their videos have gone viral. So they uh, push a lot of business through us. We do masks, uh, uh, scuba masks, um, we just a number of products, yarn of all things. I mean, I can go down the line. It's just uh, stuff that's sold on Amazon. So we do individual pick back and we also fulfill it into Amazon as well. Mm. Oh, nice. Okay. What, um, what do you use for systemization? I imagine there's so many steps with each one of these and all the customers are kind of have their own preferences or individual things they need, maybe you, you know, stuff a mailer in some, maybe not in others, or they insert. Um, what are some of the ways you communicate with the staff to, so everyone is on the same page? That's a great question. You know, what's interesting about that is there wasn't a software that existed and still uh, it does not exist. Mm -hmm to be a hybrid like we are in, and what I mean by hybrid is a print house slash fulfillment company. Right. So what we had to do was write our own system. We wrote it from the ground up um, so that it could be tailored uh, entirely to us. So my business partner and I wrote this system. It uh, handles the orders coming in. We, we have a lot of moving parts, different servers uh, that handle these processes of these orders coming in and then it goes into our system. Now our system is set up where uh, the production gets their, you know, production tickets. It tells them exactly what's in the course um, as well as the system kicks out instructions uh, for the uh, shipments to go out. So the staff in the warehouse get those shipment requests and they're able to see exactly what needs to go into each particular shipment that's going out. And then the uh, quality control takes a look at it and double checks the order prior to it being closed up and being sent. Hmm. Nice. And I know you do a lot of things for events as well. And I just wanted to give, I think, you know, a big thank you. I think a, a while ago when you and I were introduced by Vinny Fisher, I think it fully accountable. And then more recently, uh, Carrie Nab, who heads up sponsorships at Traffic and Conversion. You do a lot of um, a lot of work with Traffic and Conversion and events in general. Um, talk a little bit about what what do you do with, around Traffic and Conversion and in other events that you work with. So what we do for traffic and conversion is print just about everything uh, that they need and uh, everything from, you know, a printed item like their brochures or anything they're handing out that goes in your bag of traffic and conversion to a large format printing to the lanyards to several of the sponsors making the booths, making all of their promo items, all of that sort of stuff. So uh, that that's with traffic and conversion as well as we have a booth there so that we can talk to potential customers that need printing and fulfillment. Right. Um, the other side is events in general. So we work with companies uh, all across the, the, the scope of, of business out there, but it, primarily events have uh, for us have come down to info companies. So you have the companies, the likes of fortune builders and companies like that, that are out and doing events on the road. We handle everything for the events from all the printing, all of the logistics of everything getting to the events, as well as whatever's left over getting back and resetting it to go back out to another event. Mm. How do you sound so calm? And that's I read on your website. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> last year you supported over thirty four hundred events. Last year alone, and I don't. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's I'm you know, stressed it, out thinking it, it, about it's it. It's systems based. 
Yeah. Well, it's it's funny. It, it would be if there was if there was no systems uh, in place. But I am a, a systems person in terms of it. Systems don't fail. Yeah. Uh, people do, but systems don't. So if you have the right system in place, you can rely on the system. So uh, it's really when you have the right systems in place and you really look at uh, efficiencies and KPIs and these sort of factors to determine what is the most efficient way to do this. And you create the system around it and it gets it out. So it, it does have a lot of moving parts. It requires quite a bit of work on the back end that people don't see as far as yeah. making sure that stuff is picked up from these parcel carriers, from these events, making sure it gets back to us. When it gets back to us, it's a lot of work to go through everything, make sure that what's usable, what's not usable. Um, yeah. All the while printing new items for these events and making sure that items are getting there. We, uh, at any one given time, we have uh, events that are shipping. We have events that are currently at right. their location. Say today it's a Friday and there's a weekend event and there's events on their way back to us. So yeah. it's, if you can imagine it in your mind's eye, it's sort of like a, just a big cog that keeps on just clicking, uh, you know, one, one click at a time and everything does a circle and cut gets back to us that's amazing what would be cool it'd be really labor intensive if <clears throat> we saw i still watch like a time lapse video of like creating the logo to putting it on the thing to you producing it to ship i mean it'd be insane to watch that time lapse video of all the things that happened for it to actually show up at that event and then ship back it's it's remarkable that would be, that's a great idea. I mean, that would be a great idea just so they can see the work that goes into it. But oh because gosh. we have done that where we create it from inception. Right. So from a customer just saying, I think I want my logo to look exactly. like this, or I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. They'll tell us we, we just want these colors. Um, so from that point, yeah, exactly. Or people products. Exactly. Yeah. And so from, from that point, what we do is, we, you know, make it and create the whole design, get it out to the customer. Once uh, th that's all approved, we start making the course. And as the customers grow, not everybody grows. You know, some people are, are the size they're going to be and some grow giant, uh, you know. So, but we just, what we do is we fit it into systems we already have in place and it works out. You know, we've, we've done this for a very long time. So we have a very good uh a good idea of, of how to make everything work. Yeah, that would be really cool to see. Um, a little bit about, I mentioned some big customers um, that you, ha you have and have had. Um, what's one that was especially, you're especially gratifying or proud of based on maybe it took a long time to get them or the type of project you do with them? You know, I mentioned like Lyft and Sony and Coca-Cola and Disney and Walmart. Out of the out of the companies that you've you've gotten, um, what's one that's been especially gratifying for you? Well, it, it's they all. I've been doing it for so long that I don't really, you know, uh, pay much attention after I've done it. If that makes yeah. any sense to you, uh, my wife. I, I had done a project for Sony. Um, yeah. It was a re-release of A League of Their Own. I love that movie. Yeah. And. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, it was in, it was interesting because they called us which and asked us to redesign a DVD box for the movie. Nice. Um put a bunch of items inside of it that were part of this special edition, uh produce everything, get everything ready, boxes everything except for the actual D, uh, DVD itself which was uh put into the box by Sony at their distribution facility in the Midwest. Mm. But, and we had approximately one week to do all of it. Uh, it was a, just a limited and short run of, uh, and the design. Wow. So that was an interesting uh, project. I'll tell you why. Um, we had to come up with a design. We didn't know what to do. That uh, could we, take like six they didn't give us companies just to the design of that. Well, I, I had a good I, I had a, an idea in my mind's eye. So what we did is I had uh, one of our female employees. I went and bought a baseball and I had her kiss a baseball. Mm. We put on uh, red lipstick, bright red lipstick, and kiss a baseball. Then mm. uh, I went up the street 
took my DSLR, uh, went up the street, just up the street from us is the uh, Dodgers farm team. Mm. It's uh, called the Quakes. Anyway, they're two blocks up. Uh, they have baseball diamonds all around the main field there. So mm-hmm. took the baseball that was kissed and uh, threw it around in the dirt just to get it dirty, look like it had been used and take out my DSLR. Can't get it to work. <laughs> I proceed to drive around a little bit to find a charger for the battery. Nobody had the charger. So I got creative. At the time, I had an iPhone 7. So I take the iPhone 7, I turn it upside down in the dirt, and I take about 40, 45 pictures of the baseball. Uh, from that real close up, almost with the bokeh effect behind it. Right. And or, that ended up being the cover of the DVD case. So it was a shot down the third baseline with that you know, and throw the logos on there, put some items in it. But what I was uh, proud of that job uh, was because we were able to do it. Again, we don't tell customers, no, they needed this. I was still curious why they didn't handle it in-house with their own in-house designers, but um, they had us do it. We, and in that time, we also fulfilled, made the 25,000. It was just a run of 25,000. It was a very, it was a small limited edition, special edition run. And, Excuse me. We fulfilled it as well. So we uh, printed the boxes, assembled the boxes, put everything inside the boxes, boxed it up and got it out. And we sent it with uh, some drivers that, yeah, drove straight across to Indiana where their DC is. So it was a quick project, um, but that's what we do. You know, we've had people call us for TNC, for example, they called me less than 12 hours before the event started and needed <laughs> 6,000 of something printed. Uh, oh my and God. we did it. We printed it, cut, and I brought it with me when I drove down to the event. And um, it's, we're known for that. Uh, we've never done any advertising. Uh, we're just, we are known, it's all word of mouth. And uh, right. we're sort of known as when you have an impossible project, it's possible for USB. Mm. That should be your tagline. I don't know if it is. I was looking at your website. Um, but uh, Yeah, we played around. It's one stop, one solution, or, uh, you know, I believe because of what we do, inception to completion, because we really take projects right. from an idea to a completion. Yeah, totally. Um, how did Sony hear about you? Well, I have a friend that... Um, is uh, Jane Seymour's daughter that is a friend of mine and she was actually the one that introduced me to Sony and we were working on some different just you know different projects here and there Um, and then as I said we also we do mailing or you know we've done mailing in the past and do mailing for a bunch of different people the Grammys the Emmys the Academies Mm -hmm. um, just you know everything across the board you're like they won't need this extra award you you probably like a grammy award on your mantle just like yeah we'll keep this. Uh, that's funny (laughs) no what we do we we say yeah we send out a lot of the stuff as it's coming into award season we were sending out all the uh all the members of the academy or or Mm -hmm. the different guilds we'd send out uh, screeners and that sort of stuff uh the, the letters uh, talking about them where they can uh, view the movie prior to the mm. prior to the uh, Grammys or the Emmys yeah. or the Academies. Yeah, all that stuff. You know, they do. A, uh, not a lot of people know, but the, the, the studios do a lot of marketing to the Academy members that vote before they vote. That, that so, makes sense. To, you know, trying that to. That makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah, smart. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> So, and that's what this is, is more, it's basically marketing to get them to watch the movies and that yeah. sort of stuff. Well, if so. they don't see it, they can't vote on it, right? Or they can't elect it. So right, that's, right. That's How smart. can you vote on it in good, uh, in good conscience, right? <laughs> um, you know, Wayne, what's another cool project that you're especially proud of? The Sony one, they, I love that story um, with the League of Their Own. Um, what else? What's another cool one that you remember? I, you know, it's uh, it's really all over the board. I've never given it much thought. Sony was interesting. We we just we make 
custom boxes for people. Those are fun projects for me because it allows me to get a little creative and, mm -hmm. you know, really, uh, uh, you know, um, visualize something in my head and bring it to reality. That's, uh, that, that's always fun, you know, and that's what design is. It's, it's seeing something in your mind's mm -hmm. eye and, and really putting it to, uh, you know, to paper or on the computer, or wherever you design, whether you're illustrating or uh, what have you. But uh, I know it's tough over. You know, we just we do so many. Years. It's like which one? Um, I don't know if like you were walking in Costco or something. Oh, that's my. You know, I don't know something that's especially gratifying to see. Like it from ideas it, to fruition. You know. Yeah, you know, it never, it's funny that you bring that up because my wife would say that she was so, she was like, that's so cool that, you know, we're walking in this store and you're, the, what you produced is sitting here right? Well, for the, you know, a league of their own, for instance. Yeah, uh -huh. And she thought it was interesting, but once the project's done, I don't, it's, it's changed for me over the years. Once it's done, it's, I've done it so many times, thousands of times we've made. Yeah you know, a thousands like, and thousands of times to it at this point. Almost. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I designed billboards, all, you know, I, not that that's any sort of a big deal, but it's, it's once you, once you're complete with the project, it just yeah. becomes a memory and then you're moving on to the next one. Cause we move at such a fast pace. So, you know, it's just, uh, for me, it's, that's what it is. Um, you know, it's, it's different for my wife or friends that see things that I have done or see what I'm working on, you know, because they find it interesting, but yeah, I've sort of numb to it. Like you said, it's just, there's what about so many projects on, going at one time. You know, early on um, where you felt it was a big break for you in the company. Maybe it was a project, maybe it was a company. Well, I mean, yeah. No, it never was. It's no. just, I look at it uh, quite a bit differently. No. Yeah. It's just for me, it's, it's a, um, design is less, all that part of the business is, it's just, it's just like anything, right? Uh, it's, it's with what you do or anybody else does. It is, it's just what I do. And it wasn't anything uh, that I ever for, I, I get excited for my customers, but for myself making it never yeah. really, nothing's ever, no, not, it's just not for any other reason than because usually when I'm finished with the project, there's probably 30, 40 <laughs> other projects lined up yeah, to go. So right. I just don't have the time to breathe. <laughs> and uh, along with the well, fact that I have time. five sons, you know, what I mean? you know? <laughs> now's the time. That's what we're, we're breathing right now a little bit. Um, I, I want, I'm interested in this. You did some work with Lyft. What did you do with Lyft? Well, we send out all their new driver kits. We, you know, make and design uh, different things for Lyft. So it's a, it's that it's interesting, but again, it comes down and people are like, wow, you do that. But for us, it's, it's, again, it's another, it's just another cog it's in the wheel novelty. and we, we just keep on yeah. doing it. Yeah. We, we just put, we put a system around it. It's, it's interesting, you know, with Lyft wants their stuff out very quickly. We created a system. So, the orders come in and they go out same day and you know, whatever our customers ask, I can't go back to, to that enough. Whatever they ask, we make it happen. There used to be a joke with us that if they ask us to do their dry cleaning, we'd say we'd probably do it. And they right. started asking us to dry clean certain things and we do it now. So wow. it's just, That's it's funny. that never say no. What makes it easy. We're not the least expensive company out there doing what we do, yeah. but where the value in our company is that you can make one phone call, one single call and have everything done from the fulfillment, the printing, promo items, uh, packaging, custom packaging events, you know, just on and on. Yeah. And we even just launched a, um, an agency type company um, where we'll handle their social media, that sort of stuff, because it's, it's all part of the whole process. If we're making a look or a, a design or a logo or, a, you know, a brand for a company for us to be able to make the other assets for the social media part and, and mm. that it's just a natural fit. Yeah. When, who do you consider, um, I'm sure you have a lot of colleagues. It could be colleague. It could be um, a mentor. Who do you consider as influential on your 
you know, who do you go for for advice and in mentorship over the years? And it could be a colleague or just a mentor in general. Well, you know, uh, over the years, over the last 10 years or so, it's been uh, yeah, the guys from Digital Marketer, to be honest, you know, and uh, also uh, Fortune Builders, you know, guys like Dan Merrill, um, to with uh, Roland Frazier, Ryan Dice, you know, Perry Belcher, talking to those guys, uh, we are uh, heavily invested in their success because they order a lot from us. So, you know, and, and their success has been tremendous. So uh, using them as a mentor or relying on them as a mentor and, and asking for advice from them, those are probably the people I go to yeah. the most. Yeah. Um, I have one last question, Wayne, I ask. And first of all, thanks sure. for sharing your stories. To you, they're commonplace. To most people, it's pretty amazing how – how your work reaches so far and wide with the companies you serve and the events, you know, it really touches, you're touching, I mean, you're helping whatever, tens of thousands of, of companies, but you're touching millions of people. So um, to me, it's remarkable. To you, it's just you're, what you do. Yeah, but, I've, never, I've never really thought about it that way. That's a good, great way to look at it. I yeah. just, you know, it's when you're so close to a project, the focus does not become, well, you know, I you have to it. zoom in, if you will, right? I get it. Because someone is like, do this in a week. You're like, you can't focus on anything else but getting it done in a week. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. So, well, if, if you imagine if you imagine like an image where you zoom in, you know, and you're, you're so close to it. A lot of these projects were so close to it. It's right in front of our face. So our, our focus is, is a very little part of that project. And I've never, I don't really ever, I zoom out enough to make sure the process goes, um, you know, all the way through to completion, but never zooming way back. Yeah. Where you go, wow. You know, I've never thought about it that way, but that's an interesting, an interesting way to think about it. And if I ever had, you know, five minutes to think about (laughs) it, um, (laughs) <laughs> we'll, cons- we'll consider this your five minutes, you know. Um, Thanks. I appreciate I, it. Yeah. Um, I, so I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, two things. One, what's been a, a low moment, a challenging moment that you really had to push through? And on the flip side, what's been an especially proud moment for you in you know, decades of business? Um, because we all, you know, as a business, we there's always challenging moments and, and tough times. What's been... Uh, a challenging time and how you push through it? Well, the challenging times have been uh, less, have not really been on the business side. They, it's, we're in the service side, but it has been on the personal side. I have five sons. Oh my gosh. And um, I, uh, two of my, uh, my sons are twins. I have twins and they were born at 27 weeks. Wow. So they were... <laughs> two pounds. Um, they were in uh, the ICU for 14 weeks. One of those boys has cerebral palsy. Mm. And as a result of being born that early and it, yeah, cerebral palsy is basically brain damage. And mm. um, so while, uh, you know, working, designing, uh, managing uh, some product launches while I'm sitting at children's hospital while my son's having brain surgery. Those mm-hmm. were some, um, those were some challenging moments. Um, but the work is actually right? what helped me get through it. Y- yeah. Well, the work is what helped me get through it because it's, you know, people used to tell me when we were going through, they said, you guys are, you know, my wife and I, you guys are so strong. And, and I said, no, nobody that goes through this, you don't have a choice. There isn't, right. you don't have a, choice to be strong you're in a three-sided hallway with the back pushing you forward and you just you know continue walking mm-hmm. um so going through that whole process that was real challenge you know challenging but work is what actually kept me my mind on a singular path mm-hmm where you don't dive down into the negative of everything that's going on around you. So I was able to sit there at the hospital while all of this was going on. And he's had five brain surgery. He's had 12 or 14 surgeries by wow. this point. But, um, you know, and after the third or fourth brain surgery, which he's fine now, he's a very intelligent boy. He has several apologies in school. He's a great kid, nice. but he, um, you know, going through all that is, is I, I was grateful to have, the the work because that that's that's what kept me sane 
Wow. So what is the day in the life when you get home or before you get to the office and, and in the evening with five sons? <laughs> that many kids. <laughs> well, uh, so my, my, my oldest child, he's out of the house now, but the other four are uh, 10, 10, 9, and 3. Oh my God. So a uh, typical day is get up very early, which I do <laughs> okay. naturally. I, I go to bed about eight o'clock at night and there's a reason for that, but uh, I go to bed about eight o'clock in the evening. Um, so I get up very early, get up. Uh, I let my wife sleep in a bit. I uh, get the kids, the three ready for school that are in school. Sure. Uh, get downstairs, feed them breakfast. Uh, meanwhile, my uh, wife comes downstairs. She uh, gets her lunches ready. I uh, get them loaded up, take them to school, come to the office, do what I do all day. And there's a running joke here at the office that I, I come to work to escape the chaos at home. <laughs> but it's uh, no joke. Well, <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> All right. So uh, then uh, my wife picks them up. I get home. I hang out with the boys. We talk about their days. We do that sort of stuff. They've already had their homework done by the time I get home. Yeah. Um, typically, the, the older boys or two of the older boys um, bathe themselves. My 10-year-old uh, with cerebral palsy needs help. So I usually bathe him and the uh, my three-year-old. And that's kind of our time where we talk and chat. And then the um, the reason why I go to bed is it's a, just a nightly routine. My three-year-old, after he's got his pajamas on, he comes and lays down with me. And sure. that is like probably the single greatest sedative in the world because when he lays down with me, I fall asleep with him. So Right. <laughs> and then I wake up, put him in his bed, and rinse and repeat, uh, you know, yeah, every great. day. Thanks for sharing that. That's pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, no worries. So when's number six coming? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no more. No more? Okay. <laughs> I was never the guy that was going to have five sons. I was just never that guy. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I do have five sons. Um, but outside of that, we decided, um, that, you know, that was it. Explain to me. Yeah. I mean, come on. After like two. <laughs> <laughs> um what about on the flips? Thanks for sharing that, um, Wayne. On the flips, yeah. what's been an especially proud moment? It could be business or personal. Um, you know, the, the proud moment is just with is with the kids mostly that they're they're you know they turned out good. It's it's challenging, and what I mean by good is just all all the issues we went through um, from them being born so early. And yeah. like I said, uh, you know, they have, they're both on the autistic spectrum. So just, and they've had 6,500 hours of therapy. Wow. But they, uh, they've had literally therapy since they came home and just, you know, that, the the fact that they're well adjusted and uh, given everything that they've gone through, um, you know, that's really, uh, that's What's really about? it. You know, the, them, my kids are my greatest, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, my children are my greatest achievement. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you. I appreciate you sharing your story and I appreciate you sharing because that's the reality of, of life, right? It's people see the business stuff, but like there's this whole universe that people don't see. It's like when you go home and you come, you know, you come back to work, it's this whole world, um, which is the, the most important world. You know, so I appreciate you sharing that. Right, and it's the bulk of your day, right? Yeah. Between sleeping and, and uh, you know, yeah. your family, that, that's the bulk of your day. And this little bit of work is, you know, and I have an amazing wife that allows me to be me and, and yeah. do what I do. And, and you know, it, so that helps as well. If I didn't have that, I you know, probably yeah. things might be different or things would be different. So, What are some lessons you learned from your wife? Uh, she's calmed me down, you know, really, um, I am by nature an anxious person. <laughs> I would not so know always would moving, know. always doing something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I, um, you know, she's really grounded me, you know, that's, that's really what it is. And she's, she's the polar opposite of me. I'm a type triple a personality and she's right. very laid back and very easy going. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good offset for me yeah. because if I had somebody that was just like me, it'd probably be war all the time. What about with your business partner? Is he more calm or is he more type A like you? 
Oh, no, he's very calm, very diplomatic. I am the polar opposite. Okay. So he bounces you out in the work. <laughs> I, right. Yeah, he really does. You know, in here, which is funny, he's very diplomatic about things. I, I'm not. I don't. We do so much that uh, I don't have time for diplomacy with my employees. And they all know me and yeah. they've all been here for a long time. But they they, you know, you I don't have time for diplomacy. Is, things have to get done. Yeah. I don't pull punches and I don't yeah. sugarcoat things because right. there's just there's no time for it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I think that the two of us together really balance it out well. Cool. Wayne, I want to be the first one to thank you. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out USPfulfillment.com. Check out what they have going on. Wayne, thank you so much. Thank you so much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a peach if you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand